Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hey everyone, checking in on the MJ space. So we started the week off with a notable weekday in the Canadian MJ space. The bears showing up and the question is going to be, can they follow through? We have not seen the bears do much in the last two weeks as shown here by CGC where the bears showed up, but we had lower wicks on every red day. We closed at the low of the day today. So for me, it was very distinct. Okay, bears are showing up. We know we're looking for weekly lower highs. The bulls have held on longer than I thought they would in terms of keeping this little move going slow and steady. And now the bears are back in short-term control. If we see another red day, it'll be the, the first time since this bounce started that we've seen two red days in a row. So there's clues that we're going to be looking for that the bears are back in control and we cannot lose sight. Again, going to keep repeating it. Can we drop to lower lows? Yes, absolutely. The weekly chart may just be giving us lower highs. Lower lows could be a result as we head into the end of the year. So looking at CGC on the weekly time frame, is that a bear flag? Possibly. It depends on what consolidation looks like. Tomorrow will be very informative. 2132 short-term support. Then we're looking down at 1961 and then 1789. If we see a green day tomorrow, I'll be fairly impressed by the bulls, which certainly it has not been hard for the bulls to impress me after such low expectations recently, but that's something we're going to be watching. APHA gave back the majority of its big bull move. So we have a daily trend change with no follow through and a close at the low of the day. We're still certainly going to be looking for a daily higher low compared to 452 from where we came from. But what do we get when we have a, da a daily trend change and a lack of follow through? It means be cautious of weekly bear flags. And right now, APHA is a potential weekly bear flag. I don't think we're just going to dump straight down to lower lows. If the bears were going to take control, in my opinion, we're going to form a daily higher low, fail to see continuation, and then roll over back down towards the low. That's a possibility. Is it possible the bulls hold on here and form a daily higher low and make their way back up to the mid $5 range and potentially test $6? Yes, that's a possibility as well. And again, every single day, we get more information that's going to tell us which of the two scenarios bottom in for 2019 or lower lows coming in the next two months, every single day gives us more information. ACB, daily trend change. This morning we broke 391. Close at the low of the day, weekly bear flag absolutely still in play at this point. I traded ACB today. I made an entry. First things first, we were watching support at 377 from Friday's trading. And I said, okay, stronger open. Volume was there. Volume was there pre-market. It stood out to us. And then in the first half hour of trading, the volume stood out. So I made an entry after the low of the day had been set, after the bell rang, that was down at 383. And then the price was 387. And I said, okay, doesn't look like we're pulling back too much. The gap from the higher open filled. And I'm going to make an entry and put my stop below the low of the day. I entered at 387. I was risking four cents at that point. I guess by the time I would stop out, it would be five cents. So five cent risk. And we ended up going seven cents up. That's not worthwhile enough. After we traded around here a little bit, I exited at, I exited half at 392. Why? Because what that allows me to do is put my stop loss under the low of the day at break even. I now have zero risk on the trade and that allows me to just sit back and let it play out. If the MJ sector is going to show some strength, maybe it's ACB's turn after we've seen labs and VFF and APHA run. Is ACB going to be next? I put myself in a position to benefit if it were. In the end, it was not meant to be. And as soon as we broke 386, that was the clear indication for the bears. 386 was a triple bottom. By that point, I had moved my stop for the second half of my position up at 385 because I assumed that if 386 triple bottom of support is going to break, we're likely going to see new, a new low of the day. So by putting my stop level there, I ensured that on the trade, I ended up with small profit. Nothing big, nothing entirely worthwhile, but I have more money than I had on Friday because of that trade and it was just being protective. So taking that half position profit 
made all the difference in the world rather than sitting there and trying to make a decision in the heat of the moment and saying, are we going to see continuation? Are we going to pull back? I can just take half, stop loss, break even, let it do its thing. So we ended up with the bears in complete control and we are weak. We're looking back down at 350 as support. And if we drop below 350, it's 340. And then a weekly bear flag will confirm if 340 breaks. Again, just no confidence in these charts right now for the bulls. Cron, top of the move is set. So we have our low, high of the wild day, higher low, lower high. Bulls must hold 806 to stay in this equilibrium. That's the most important support level. And we'll see if that equilibrium holds out into at least the end of this week, potential play off of that support. TLRY pulling back. Bulls have to hold 2103 support. That's our daily high or low. Again, could TLRY be a weekly bear flag? You bet your bottom dollar it could be. We have to prepare for the possibility that we see another leg down in the Canadian MJ space because it's absolutely positive or possible. Hexo, earnings report. How did we react? Not sure if it's come out yet, to be honest. Haven't checked in with Hexo. Either way, 228 is the only nearby support level. If it's a bearish reaction after 228, we're looking down at 2 psychological. If it's a bullish reaction, we're going to be looking up at 286 resistance. Anything under 286 is just a daily lower high. Even OGI, which looked great. Big bounce, daily bull flag, confirmed. Little bit of follow through, closed down at the low of the day down almost 10% from the high of the day and looking at our daily high or low of 342. If 342 breaks, and actually it's 339, that's the low of that consolidation. If 339 breaks, we lose the daily high or low pattern, our weekly lower high is set, and it's less likely that this is a bear flag because of the amount of space, the percentage distance that we would have to see for a lower low. It's much closer on a name like ACB than it is on OGI. But again, bears are in control. BFF, triple top now at 881. Very clear resistance level. And again, you can be, you know, people with technical analysis, you can be a long-term investor and utilize technical analysis. If I'm sitting here watching today's trading on VFF, I'm looking around and I'm seeing weakness in all the major Canadian MJ names, and I see a double top at 881 on VFF, even if I, it takes me 1% before I realize, hey, I should probably sell that double top. I can always rebuy cheaper. You know, let's say I sold at 872. I can now reload multiple percent cheaper, the same amount of shares in the same day. It's just a very clear signal where if you get comfortable with technical analysis, you can maneuver around on very clear setups to reload with more shares. You could have taken off, even if it's just one or 2%. Do that five times in a two-month span, and you just lowered your cost basis on your long-term position by 10%. So we have the double top. 822 is the most important support. Nice job by the bulls holding it first thing this morning to give the bulls confidence to test that resistance. But now that we've rejected, if we drop down and break 822, further daily consolidation is coming, and we'll look for a higher low compared to 650. Labs is the strongest looking name out of everybody that we just looked at in Canadian MJ. It's a daily bull flag possible. Declining bear volume and anything above 413 is a higher low on the daily chart. Bulls would love to hold 470 tomorrow. If 470, the low of current consolidation holds, the odds of a daily bull flag will increase a little bit. So that wraps up Canadian MJ. And again, there's just not a whole lot to get excited about. If you have some nice positions from the bounce, then that's great. You can put your stop at break even. You can put your stop somewhere where you lock in some short-term profit and then take it with a fresh clean slate and give it another attempt later. But again, we must protect against the possibility that lower lows could be coming and they'll be coming on some names faster than others. Again, just looking at the percentage move CGC, we have to drop down 17% to see a lower low. That's still a lot of space to work with. Bulls are a lot more comfortable than on ACB, which is only seven or 8% until we drop to a lower low. Now onto USMJ. Cure Leaf is still a daily bear flag. We're only looking down at two little supports of 695 and 685. It's certainly looking like a bear break is the most likely scenario. If those levels do break, we're going to be looking down at six psychological after 685. Bear's still in control. Rejected from resistance, 740. We topped out at 738, a little double top at that level. 
C-Web Bulls showed up today. So we had some news that the White House signed off on the USDA's uh, the, the guidelines that they set in the hemp industry. We don't know what those details are just yet, but we know they're coming. And there's potential that C-Web could benefit from that. If it creates a barrier to entry for small CBD producers or competition, if it makes regulations so that you have to have safety inspections or whatever, I'm not sure what we're going to be expecting, but whatever the hurdles are that are added, if C-Web has already overcome those hurdles due to their size, it's potentially beneficial. We also had an email go out to investors about the fact that C-Web is going dark for an announcement, I believe tomorrow morning. Either way, the bulls have to break 1958 to change the daily trend. And we have a spike in bull volume and some interest in the bulls today. After no interest the last five days, I made an entry at the end of the day on C-Web. Why? Because we had a nice 15 minute clear equilibrium and I thought, okay, the setup is good. If people are hyped up on news, we're going to be looking for a potential uh, end of the day bull push to try and close strong. So I entered on this consolidation right here. 1821 was my stop. We projected from 1853. We double topped at resistance. We broke one resistance. We could not break the second or the third. And I exited just under break even at the end of the day, as did a lot of other people recognizing the bulls did not have the momentum to break resistance and close strong. So still watching the daily chart, but just an example of a end of the day play. And again, just remaining very conservative, both MJ trades that I made today, very conservative to put myself in a position to potentially profit, but a tight leash where if we don't see what I want to see, then I'm going to exit for either a small win or a small loss fairly quickly. TRUL still riding this swing trade position from a couple weeks ago. As long as we hold 1287, I will remain in this trade. If we reject from 1375, which we did today, rejected by 11 cents, if we come down now and break 1287, we then have a daily lower high and lower low. And I personally would no longer want to be in my position if we lose the daily uptrend. From there, we zoom out and we look for a weekly higher low to try and form compared to 1040. IAN bulls are still holding on just fine. We have a couple little supports. I still don't call this a daily uptrend. There's not a clear enough pivot point and a clear enough period of consolidation to give us that daily trend change. So it's not a daily uptrend as far as I'm concerned, but we have little supports that are keeping the bulls in control. 211 held and now a higher low at 222. Resistance after 245 is 257. And again, if I'm going to call it a daily trend change, I have to see a clear top, clear multiple days of consolidation, and then continuation. So it's still a nice move. We're still looking for a weekly lower high, but I would not call it a daily trend change at this point. GTII is staying in its daily equilibrium, although the bull is not getting a whole lot of follow through here. Low, high, higher, low, lower, high, double bottom. We're scouting a lower high, upper wick on today's candlestick, 1134 key short-term support. If it breaks, we're looking back down at the lows of 2019 consolidation. MedMen earnings just came out. Big time bull run up. Man, if you are in that move, you want to be taking profit heading into those earnings. We just saw a bounce of almost 50% and we are still very much in a weekly and daily downtrend. And it's looking like with a miss, we will probably see a bearish reaction. Question is, can the bulls hold 131 to try and form a daily higher low? OH. So OH is still weak. 492 broke. I'm still not interested in another entry in OH because we're not in extreme RSI levels. The daily is not oversold. The four hour is not oversold. The hourly is just barely oversold. If we see a 5% red day tomorrow, I'm going to start getting interested again. The discount for OH compared to CL is now 45%. That starts to get my interest again as well. The market is pretty much saying we don't think that this, they're saying two things. Either we don't think this deal is going through or we don't think that this deal is going through with the same terms and the discount and the share conversion is going to be less favorable for the OH shareholders than it was previously announced. Those are both possible scenarios, but we're just going to be looking for fluctuation where we're going to reach a bottom on the discount, in my opinion, and then that discount level will start to shrink on a bounce. So CL is still holding on just fine. The bulls must hold 772 and break 889 to change the daily trend. But you better believe that I'm going to be interested in OH for these oversold bounces because I'm going to be looking for not only a share price oversold bounce, but a discount price oversold bounce at the same time as well, just adding a little bit of momentum to that bounce.
So that's where we stand in both sectors. Again, not a whole lot to get excited about. S&P 500 is at all time highs. The sector has had some nice opportunity for bulls over the last two weeks, but USMJ is still absolutely struggling bigger picture and Canadian MJ weekly time frame bigger picture is absolutely still struggling as well. So we must remain skeptical. We forgot our sorrows as bulls the last two weeks, but it's very possible that those are freshly brought up in our memory over the next week or two. FOMC is Wednesday. Watch the market video for more information on that. But again, just be protective and anticipate that we can absolutely see either way play out. Weekly higher lows and then continuation into the end of the year for an end of the year bull run or weekly lower highs are now set and we're fading down to see lower lows before the new year. Both are possible. Every day gives us new clues. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good rest of your day. And we're going to wrap it up here with a timely video, more animal sanctuary. You'll see the little Boston Terrier Bruce in here. And I think Bruce gave me a whole bunch of fleas that I am now battling and it is all out war. The fleas struck first. I've got bites all over my legs, probably two to three dozen at this point, but I hit him back with the diatomaceous earth and I've got the washing machine running with tea tree oil, nonstop washing everything. The rugs have gone into the basement until a below freezing night to freeze everybody out of there. I'll let you know how it goes. This is certainly not my first rodeo with fleas and it certainly won't be the last. Man, what a dinosaur noise. <laughs>